my while I was uh, waiting to redo my spells so we could get out of there. Yes, when Snorri had his his own Snorri sidetrack personal yes personal vision. We kind of re upped <clears throat> everyone's visions. You may not know that while you were out. But uh, yeah, you guys had just about cleared out this particular uh, toll crossing, you might want to call it, here in the Underdark, uh, when we left off last time. You had recovered the cache of tithes that had been collected over the years and found a particularly interesting uh, magic item that you then gave over to Wolf, your hardy ranger. And I was able to to uh, level up your NPCs by the way, so they can catch up with you a little bit because they're having to carry uh, a lot more weight than originally anticipated. Because the original idea was that Ingrid would be with you, and unfortunately, uh, she's been missing for the entirety of your descent into the underworld so far. Mm. But hopefully, she's doing some really good scouting, and uh, we'll come back with a lot to. Mm. <laughs> to report at some point. So let's move you guys back over onto the map in question. Take a moment to uh, reacclimate yourself to the map. You guys had literally just found the hidden treasure room. Hidden behind what you thought was just a, a simple closet. <laughs> 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 they almost walked away from that, though I wasn't sure if they were going to come back to it or not. Yeah, we still have a couple of doors to explore too, I think, right? Up here as well. Yep, that's it. Just uh, that last little section. I think we cleared out everything in the treasure room now. Yes, I mean, we, we went over, I thought we went over the treasure. I think we did. I've got some things on my sheet that I don't remember. Like something called the Dark Skull. Was that in here? That sounds intriguing. Yeah, the leather armor from the last from the last game. Potions in a secret room. Elixir of Love. Definitely had the shields. Uh, I can afford that one. of the serpent uh, I think the dark skulls just came off of uh, just one of those guys okay one of the darrow yeah yeah I see it now the ebony skull the dark skull yeah you I remember you got it I don't know what it does <laughs> Snorri. <laughs> it's worth a lot. It's worth a lot. Um, it does the unhallow spell. So the unhallow spell, it's in its permanent. It's like constant. Oh, so that, uh, that was different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, a magic circle against good all the time. Um, I get to plus four to resist uh, negative energy channeled within the spell's effect. And then there's another, um, you may choose to fix a single spell to the unhollow. The spell lasts for one year, so I guess they'd have to put a spell on it. And there's a whole bunch of uh, lists of spells that can be put on there. Or we could just sell it for 60 grand, which I'd be good with. Kind of cash poor right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we passed poor. We also got that plus one short sword. Which would be 23, I mean, 
I mean, that's not the selling price. Yeah. Um, that quarter staff, master of quarter staff. Did did you take that that Crystalline's quarter staff? No, no, I'm sticking with my great sword. That's uh six hundred gold pieces, so we could sell that just to give you some cash if you meet. Give you. I I'm good. I just I just need spell. I just need money for my spell book. That's all. Yeah, but you're getting fourth level. Those spells are getting expensive. Yeah, 160 a pop. They sure are. I've got a uh, finger of death I can't afford right now. <laughs> Speaking of the finger of death, why don't you guys go ahead and roll D100 and see who gets the free re-roll for the evening. Ooh. Got the Mario Lemieux. It's hockey day in Canada. Oh, very good. Okay. I, I won't get any hockey reference. No. So. Oh, actually, that's the Eric Lindros. <laughs> You'll have to. <laughs> Eric Lemieux is 66. <laughs> You'll have to explain all of those. Whatever you throw them out. <laughs> okay, so. Lucky number 88 for today. It, all right. Is that Mario, Mario Lemieux's number? <laughs> no, he's the, the, cra the crazy 88s from Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah, crazy 88. All right, so I'm assuming we got everything. Let's go uh, boogie on down to number two. Here. Is this anything on the map, Jamie? This uh <clears throat> That's one of the Darrow Magisters that the uh that the guys mercilessly slaughtered on their way in when they were uh, they were welcomed into the trade crossing by the Darrow and uh the Dark Elf and Shadow Elf just mercilessly jumped on these Darrow and slaughtered them all and took everything they had. That's the way that's the way the upworlders do it. <laughs> it shall it shall all be our dominion. All right. <laughs> Yeah, let's go. Uh... Uh, just a uh, quick reminder. <laughs> you might want to plug your ears in there. There is some uh, chanting going on that could uh, affect the. I see. Side so to, to coming from the walls. We had and the way they shut it off. We I hadn't saw before escaping. I see. Okay. We'll see if I have any wax on my character sheet. Yeah, and the stone doors are actually very hard to find. Uh, Lucian has, he's picked open enough of them now, he can kind of spot them without rolling. As long as they're not, not hidden doors, but the ones that he, he's been through, um, he, can, he can open pretty simply. But they all, like, slide, roll, open, roll, uh, back into the wall. It's part of Darrow engineering and then they slide back in closed. And the song will drive could drive you mad, so that's maybe it, I have an idea if you will uh he's talking about room number two up here. Yeah. 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 So I'm I've got uh some thunderstones. Do you want to go deaf for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I would think we could just put like cotton in our ears just while we're in the room. I, I don't think it'll completely block up the sound though. It might give us bonus from savings. Yeah, I've, I've got to buy daggers. We could just stab out our eardrums. That way we won't hear anything. Uh, you okay. first. Yeah, and then you'll never hear again. Okay. With Thunderstone, it's only uh, for an hour. You with that light again. <laughs> I was gonna seal it with. I was gonna seal my ears with wax, but I don't have any. What passes for music to these Darrow nowadays is just shameful. Ah, uh, but your will is is really strong. We could. I could probably get us through before. Then, or we could solve the puzzle of the room. There seems to be a way to shut it off. Maybe, but that could at least get us through the opposite entrance before it can affect us. It's only a 50% 50% uh, spell failure chance. Shall we proceed? Well, th did this one already close? 
You can just, just open, I'm just yeah. You can open and just, close them as regular until you get up to this one. I'm deciding here. I want to see the effects okay. of the thunderstone and all that. Since <laughs> I mean I wasn't affected, and I had and Will is like my weakest thing, so you you'll be fine. <laughs> it's the other two, maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> uh, nothing at I, all. He's treating us like NPCs again, Wolf. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually do that. I actually take out some. Uh, let me see what I got in my. Maybe just a little. I mean, at least it's, it. it's a minus four on initiative and a twenty percent chance to miscast a spell. Oh, for thunderstone. Yeah, I'm gonna. If nobody else wants in on this, I'm gonna deafen myself for an hour. Uh, uh, Wolf well, says, "Ah, fine. I too shall deafen myself." It's better than hearing yeah. the strange musics of the underworld. I've heard it before. I shall take some, hold on, let me see, cloth and plug my ears. Just hopefully give me a little defense, maybe make it hard to under, for it to affect me. Okay, so uh, we'll choose to fail. <laughs> and Maya says, uh, I shall just perform a, a bardic rhyme and counter song the effects. The key. Excellent. No need to uh, definitely then, probably, if he can count himself. So, uh... uh well, we don't have to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> so you want them... It is fine with pale hair. So you want them <laughs> drooling and wasting away. <laughs> so while Wolf is leaning in with his ear to the stone, I am prepared oh. to be deafened, friend Snorri. All right. We'll talk to you in right. an hour. Boom. <laughs> We shall be deafened on the slopes of Valid Hall together. <laughs> ah! Do I need to roll a disable device on the door? Let me see here. Uh, what was your take 10? My take 10 is 30. Okay, yeah. So if you take 10, you can just... Okay. You can open it. So take 10. Uh, you may want to use your song now. <laughs> what? We can't hear you! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, that's him with the bright guy, right? <laughs> no, Maya already started. He's he is, okay. Uh, he's humming so and muttering the dwarven in uh, low in his breath. So that popped the door open. open. Yeah, so this is a mostly featureless room. You can see the uh, the unfortunate Gripley there laying dead in a pool of his own blood on the floor of the room. I did search him, didn't I? There are th three extremely uncomfortable Davenports made wholly of stone aligning the northern wall there and then what appears to be the door exiting the room to the uh, to the west Piers <laughs> yes well you haven't opened it yet so it's still kind of tricky to find uh, so it's going to take okay. a perception check and you do hear the strange uh, dark melodies of the music that's emanating out from the walls here in the chamber although uh, Maya's you find Maya's hymn rather comforting as he's countering the effects at present with his counter song. I get up here and I roll perception. I feel fine, really! Can't hear a thing! 29. Does that locate the door? Yes. And then take 10 to disable it. Yes. Okay. Very good. Mathander is keeping watch. He's, he said he'll make sure that none of the Darrow sneak up on you from behind. Shoot them with your boomstick. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. I can't do it in his voice, so I shall not even attempt. <laughs> 
<laughs> can't, do the, can't do the accent. Yeah. Okay, so you roll the stone door back into the wall, and it reveals a series of steps descending down to a platform. On the steps, and peek around the corner. Peek around the corner, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you see oh, uh that, that guy again. <laughs> you see another yeah, another Darrow Magister there and uh he appears to be tending to uh three more of those small uh the small Darrow savants which you overthrew last time if you remember. They're with that sword. And they're all howling and wailing and Yes, that you took care of with your sword, yes. And like pointing in your direction and stuff. <laughs> I guess you heard the door open. <laughs> you heard the song. You heard the song. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh, I only got. Okay. So, uh, before going there, I shall. Cast haste. Ooh, you're gonna cast haste. As long as it catches, you know, them, those two. Yeah. We're gonna have to fight them. So the, uh, <clears throat> The Darrow Magister, he like his eyes roll up in his head and his hands go out in front of him and he starts uttering some sh strange uh, unutterable words <laughs> low on his breath. <laughs> <laughs> you can't quite tell what's going on with him. Does anybody else do anything when he uh, casts haste? Uh, I imagine I've seen haste enough to know that that's what he's doing. Uh, if you want me to make a spellcraft check, I will. No, you don't need to. Okay, so once I feel the effects of haste, I rush forward. Mm, okay. With my sword in hand. All right, well, let's go ahead and roll initiative then. All right, I just want to make sure that my minus two applies for being deafened. And I, will. I ticked it off on the thing, so it sh should take effect. But yeah, there it is. And let's see for Wolf. Oh, I forgot to put Deafen on Wolf. Wolf is two points less, so 11. Let's see here. Current buffs. their sheets last time and I had a little trouble with them. Oh, can you not see me? There you go, now you can see me. Okay. Hey baby! Sometimes I forget what is on your level and what's not. Okay. Order. Very 
surprising. Lucian's not at the top. He's always at the top. I rolled a 19 that time. Look, I'm at the top. <laughs> what does Lucian do? Uh, he moves here, then here, then he's got acrobats past them and trying to get to this spot here. Sixteen, roll to one. <laughs> Nineteen is one. Oh, no, that they stopped me. Did you roll through his square, or did you go around him? I tried to go around him on this side, but over here, I figured I didn't know. I'm uh. assuming, no, no, I don't know what that was. So I thought they were. I don't know how high these are here. They are tiny, uh, so you can move through their square without revoking. Okay. Uh, the okay. other, uh, the Darrow Magister doesn't seem to spawn. His eyes are still curled up in his head. Okay. So, I, with the swift action, my shadow envelops him. And then I strike out with my, uh... You say it so casually. <laughs> <laughs> with my rapier, and hopefully we we'll see if he's an illusion. <laughs> Let's see. So I attack with the rapier. Let's see. Twenty-eight. Okay, that hits. And for sixteen. And since I'm blank, I get a two D six. Eighteen, and then the shadow develops it. We strike out. So my melee is uh, plus seven, but it's a plus nine, so it's a plus two to that. So seventeen. Uh, seventeen will hit. He's still flat. And, and okay, and so that will. Do. Actually, I'm at level nine, so he'll get sneak attack also. That's one to level up. The shadow will get sneak attack damage. I guess a three d six. Sure. Plus. Go ahead and use it. Okay. One d eight. So d eight. Five of level, nine of level nine is a good level up for you. Yeah, this is a D8 and then uh 3D6. Whoa. In turn. Sorry, didn't count. Take a, I forgot we haven't rested yet, so <laughs> so just a five. We haven't rested yet. I forgot we haven't rested. Is that okay? It's an intern, yeah. Okay, so, since you stabbed him up, the Magister quits, uh, his eyes roll back into place and he turns to you, almost shocked that you stabbed him, before a, a look of anger flashes across his face and he reaches out with his mind to attack you, Lucian, um, casting defensively as he is. 
a sense of self-preservation, at least. And you need to make a save. Fortitude save. And as you feel your synapses violently triggering in your arms and legs and entire body. It's 17. Suddenly thrown out of control. Okay, that saves. Okay. But you are going to take the damage. Six points electrical damage. Well, plus I look at twenty one. Wolf. Ah, uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five. We'll go over to here. Maya taps him on the shoulder and lets him know it's his turn in initiative. <laughs> he runs. He runs up, drawing an AOO. If, if the babies or the magister get it. Uh, no, he does not. Uh, yeah, he'd go through my square, and then over to there. So they don't attack him. Oh, okay. The, cool. uh, the uh, savants don't have reach because they're just they're little. They're only little. Um. Uh, 28 to hit for 9. I don't know why the sneak attack's on there. Is he a rogue? I think he was. Uh, he is a ranger. He does have some attack. When he, when he gets Rangers have? He's a spellless sneak ranger. Oh, okay. I get sneak attack when it applies. It, it's still only 9, so it doesn't even apply. Yeah. The magister's gone, so. I did not know that. Oh, just once, yeah. yeah. The first one for nine. That's right. Hex into him once definitely gets his attention. Right? Uh, okay. So the uh, the fetal savants start giggling and babbling. <laughs> So everybody needs to make a will save. <laughs> yeah. even, even the deaf people? Oh, no. That's a good point. Um... What you got that in there for his counter song? Where is he? <laughs> He's probably out of range, too. Yeah, no. It's only 30 feet. He was counter songing the other room. I know it's like still in the room. <laughs> Alright, we're on the 16. Oh, that actually is probably close enough for his counter song, actually. Okay. It's within 30 feet. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll let his counter song, uh, we'll counter. We'll counter that. So, actually, so <laughs> uh, the way that works is he does the roll. for some reason, 17 and 29. <laughs> well... Take, take 29. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's got 
got any additional bonus to that or not. It's actually 17. It's just low enough. Um, so everybody will need to make their own roll and get over a 17. Is it sound dependent? Yes. Okay, Sonic. Yes. Okay, so me and uh, me and Wolf are okay. Okay. Yes. So you're okay. So Lucy, just you. Yeah. You can get a plus one from your cotton in your ears. Okay. Did, come on, the will save. Yes. Well, that I did that. It'll be seventeen then. Oh, <laughs> seventeen is just low enough. Okay, so that's fail. Uh. Could I have the willpower heavy roll? Did you get a surgeon? Do you have? Uh, do you have, do you um, have points I, left? Yeah, I will surge it. That's my last mythic power, so I'll surge it. Okay, you can surge it if you want to. If not, I'll tell you what uh, happened. <laughs> well, 18. the good news is, is the 18 was the target, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He can't hear you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Don't worry, Snorri was thinking about killing the babies anyway. Okay, so uh, Lucy and make another will save to feel uh, a presence inside your mind. Okay. 20, okay. 20. You're able to force it out and maintain control over yourself. Maya of Embla. Maya will get closer, so his... Actually, he'll... <laughs> we'll, we'll have him restart his counter song. Just get another nice. song. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Alright, so that will... Much better. That will protect you. help to counter effect everything. Okay, let's have let's have the wolf make a will save. He's creeping in his mind. He's deaf. If that's what it is. Okay, he resisted. You see him grab his head, and he's like... Uh, he's deafened, too. Yeah. Me and Wolf are, are deafened. If you could hear what he was saying, he's saying something oh. like, No, I am Wolfus. Uh, I stand alone. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, it's a different effect. Okay, that they're all doing the same thing. <clears throat> now, let's have Snorri make a will say. All right. Can't be left out of all the fun. Oh, very good. Okay. He resists as well. And Snorri's up. What do you do? Um, Ran all the way in there. They just stood there the whole round. <laughs> Be first. Uh, okay. <laughs> Back on baby beside me. Uh, 22 to hit for 14 points of damage. This guy right here. Yep. That will mercilessly slaughter him, slice his little tiny infant torso <laughs> in half. Okay, and I'll stay right here to keep the flank on and I'll attack this baby with my haste attack mm, he failed his uh, save to avoid soul draining uh, 23 for 9 on this baby okay oh okay 
hacked him to he's dying. Okay, we'll let him drink the soul then. <laughs> and that's enter. Round two, Lucian. <laughs> the first round shall go to this one. Attacking with the rapier. Seventeen. Is that with your flanking modifiers? Uh, actually, no. It'd be nineteen. Okay, so that hits. Nineteen, or uh, that will be seventeen plus. Nice, twenty-two. And the shadow will strike out. Also. So he goes down from your blow, and then like your shadow is like stabbing him on the ground. <laughs> okay, and the other one, my other attack, the non hate attack, will attack the uh, le bebe. For 27 with three. Okay, it's still up, even though you stabbed it through with your rapier. It's, the blade is like poking through its little belly. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> and that's it, turn. I'll let you share the ones for attack. Dying. Well, Wolf. Uh, there are two babies left. There are two babies left. All right. <laughs> I should use my swords, Rogan Crook, to kill these babies. <laughs> <laughs> these monstrosities. He wouldn't kill babies. <laughs> Being monster babies. <laughs> They're just monsters. There's no babies involved. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, so... Oh. All right, well, well, Grog did 10 points, and then Krook did 21. For 28, actually, for the crit. Yeah. I get your joy killing these babies. You can finish off both of them that way. All right. And with that, the halls grow silent once more, except for the uh, the constant sound of Maya's hymn filling the hallway. And uh, Snorri and Wolf going, nah, 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 trying to make that clear your ears noise. <laughs> <laughs> and saying, what? I can't hear you. Snorri and I deafened ourselves. It was a very smart plan. What? Just saying that over and over. Yeah. I'll give uh, Lucian a thunderstone if he wants to deafen himself so he doesn't have to listen to Wolf. <laughs> what? <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> right. I'll, uh, I'll try and cast Detect Magic. 42, beat it. <clears throat> Yeah, we gotta beat the twenty percent miss chance on that. Okay. Perception. We've seen what real perception on the room. So uh, there is magic coming from the, uh, the giant stone sphere, and uh, you realize it's set up like the other scrying stone uh, in the other part of the complex, a series of runes around it. 
that uh, okay. you wound up using to uh, program kind of like coordinates. And right now it's actually, uh, the, there's an image showing up on the stone and it's flashing in between uh, the first two rooms showing uh, the dead Gripley in the waiting room and the dead Magister and the guards at the, the entrance room uh, and whatnot. The uh, Magister himself has uh, just regular leather armor, uh, masterwork club, robes, and does have some minor gems and jewels here on his uh, uniform. So let's. to random gems, which is what I was trying to to find. <clears throat> so he's got a fleshy red carnelian. worth roughly 64 gold pieces and a rich brown stone with gold undertones tiger's eye worth 300 and assorted coins worth 86 gold pieces okay nothing else uh, magical in here the uh, the cages the Darrow savants are, are kept in are really well made. Um, they do uh, they do detect this magic. They they have enchantments on them that help keep the uh, fetal Darrows uh, contained within. So they're not really magical to anyone except for them for that purpose. Did use it for like pets or something like that? Was it some sort of? Uh, they're used when Darrow. Um, they're used to to attack. Um, they usually they're carried through enemy ranks to to infuse madness and confusion amongst the enemy mm -hmm. ranks. Yeah, but like the cage itself, what what effect does it have? Just is it? give them sustenance or protect them from heat and cold or
it is it's unknown it. to upper worlders. <laughs> it's beyond the scope of this adventure. It's just, it's just unknown. Yes, there's a chance All for right. them. <laughs> All right. It's other them in the river. <laughs> yes. I'll have no more of these cages. <laughs> I was thinking we could sell these to the dwarf, though. Like if you could keep a pet in it and keep a pet alive without having to feed it or clean it. Yeah, cool. they're, they're not like that because they do feed no. those things. Yeah, they're not like cages of sustenance or anything. Okay. We won't, won't worry about them then. Okay, that's everything. You guys found everything. Okay. What we can do is, um, after I get my hearing back in about an hour. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be screaming like a retard, like uh, Wolf the whole time. <laughs> I told you the time change got hey, Michael. Hey, there he is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had some troubles getting out of bed today. Welcome. No problem. Well, it's okay. We thought it might be the time change. But nonetheless, so you got here just in time. They uh, finished making their way through the compound here, uh, killed the remaining Darrow Magisters, and slaughtered whatever uh, fetal savants they could find. So you found these various uh, kind of stone scrying devices, and then you know that... Um, the platform works to transport uh, ships all throughout the, the underways. Um, and then there is another another tunnel through uh, Section 10 that you can use to, to head out the back way. So last time you had discussed, um, you realize following the path down out of uh, section 10 would take you to an area where you would run into the drow so you thought um, perhaps of avoiding that and following the river instead to where it would lead you back to uh, the long road and uh, one of the small trade outposts in the area so wait you've been you've been playing yeah, yeah the past was, hour. Yeah. In um in North oh. America, our clocks went ahead by like, an hour this week. We should bring ahead. Oh. Yeah, like, that's okay. I figured that's what. Ah, uh, I see. Figured that's what it was. I see. Okay. We figured that's what it was. You just missed yeah. one encounter, yeah. basically. Yeah, you haven't missed a whole lot. But you still have you, a chance. You were keeping to... watch. <laughs> yeah, you were keeping watch doing a good job uh, and you still have a chance to steal the re-roll for the night so if you want to roll the d100 you can yes I haven't used it yet yeah. nope nope <laughs> you don't get that one nope it was Guy LaDouche's number apparently mm. yep <laughs> LaBoo <laughs> So, as we okay, were saying... Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Say again. What was in this chamber? Uh, uh Devin, Savant, and uh, three three crazy babies. Yes, okay. and, and the uh, the stone artifact there is some sort of primitive uh, scrying device that the Darrow used to uh, navigate the waters and tunnels of the underworld here. Uh, same as this one. Yeah, yep. same as that one. So, do we get a rough idea on time, how long it would take to go down the river, or how, in distance, how far down the river uh, the dwarf was? Yeah, about half a day's travel. Oh, uh, okay. Please, uh, I'm to heal myself from that mind blast. Okay. <laughs> Did I already uh, do healing on you today? I don't think I have. I think you're only down four hit points when I came in. So let's uh, let me do that one for you. Eight 
sequence. So you go 16 back. Yes. If so that you, helps. You've cleared out this area, so you can potentially rest here, or you can continue down either one of the exits and uh, just find a place to rest and rest there, or you could just continue on and make your way to uh, to the outpost. I mean, it's pretty much up to you. Yeah, I say we rest for the night, at least. I say we rest, we just gotta figure out what room. <laughs> uh, number four looks decent. What was, in, what was in that again? Those crazy four pillars. Yeah, that had the three obelisks in it. Well, there were obelisks in a lot of them, but yeah. Yeah. Did they seem to do anything? The uh, the runes would would light up, but uh, you couldn't quite determine. Okay. Yeah. It's resting here. Indicating. Yeah. That's a number five. That's the secret. Uh, the secret cash it, room. The treasure room. Yeah. Okay. They opened that up while you were while Mithander was keeping watch. Whereas when I'm not looking, they yeah. find the cash. Yeah, yep. they told you that it was, it was completely <laughs> empty too. Yeah, exactly. Uh, nothing here. Nothing here at all. <laughs> Damn it. It's all right. Let's do it. <laughs> no, actually, they did find some things. We can't remember what. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Galena Armor Gems. Uh, in the cash, the hidden cash, it was uh, 586 gold, 30 platinum pieces. We found the elixir of love that was labeled yep. healing potion. Holy shit. A property That's deed. That's for you, Methanda. A witch? A property deed. Four flasks of alchemist fire and a scrimshaw incense burner that you can appraise. Uh, okay, one of them can appraise it. Actually, quite valuable at 600 gold pieces. As well as the uh, enchanted bashing shields that you gave to the bull. They're twin bashing shields, like he has his twin sword. I'm sensing a theme. I'm trying Can I to make remember an if... alchemist check to to identify the love potion? Sure. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember if you got the uh, dark skull out of here or if that was another. I think it's the ninth one. No potion, I mean. <laughs> Song. Yep. Yes, it's a love potion. It's an elixir of love, as stated. Mm -hmm. It's just labeled healing potion. Then okay. I will put it on an extra spot in my healing potion bag. Okay. In that last grouping you just read, how much gold did you say? 586. 586? 586. 586. 586, okay. I'll have that 86. That was from the treasure room. Yeah. And it was 86 in, in from the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, that Dark Skull was off the Necromancer, I think. Might have been. Yeah. I was sitting here trying to figure out where it was in this, and it wasn't from this. Everybody add 184 okay. gold pieces to your totals. Excellent. Rest in. That also going to the group fund. So if you guys are going to rest, then you can make your make sure you made your level up adjustments. Gotcha. gotcha. Do I need to resend you my thing? We shouldn't be that far back in message. I had downloaded it. Let me see if I can find it. Stop. I will not let you in. You shall not pass. You've been talking to the cat. Yes. He's trying to <laughs> trick me to let him in or he can hack me and steal dice uh, and all kinds of stuff. Not the books over. Uh, uh, Sticking his arm under the door. He's <laughs> like, let me in. Uh, well, I don't see where I put you. You might have to send it to me again. Just send it. Just a little slow. Oh, here it is. We got it? Yeah. Lucy in 9.2. Yeah. Yes, I have it. Okay, so this will be a good point. It's going to take me... Just a couple minutes to upload this um, and that's if it actually works so this would be a good point to do a uh, bathroom break and refill their drinks and stuff and, uh, cool. see if I can get this to work right quick All I actually right. had trouble with one of them they, they didn't know oh, really for it. yeah um, Maya wouldn't update um, and I could not figure out why okay
Okay. Is everyone back? Or is Phil on their way back? I'm back. Or yeah, I'm back. In between. I'm back too. Okay. Very good. Did, I need to, did it work? Uh, it appeared to work on my end, so yes. Okay. I will jump out and jump back in. That's a good idea. Let us see. I believe I already updated a Wolf. It was Maya for some reason. I did not want to update. I don't know what was happening. So anyway, so the party is able to rest through the evening. You feel invigorated by your sleep. You remain uh, relatively unmolested by any further Darrow in the area. So, you awaken bright-eyed and bushy-tailed the next day. What do you do? As I drink from my vintage Nova Centurion cup. <laughs> well, there's two ways to go. Um, Snowy can water walk us on the river all the way to this dwarf's place if you want to go down that way. Like, I'm good for three hours. And then, um, if we get into four, five, six hours, I can just, uh, mythic point them. Sounds I could, good. I could also do one water breathing for everybody, and we could, it would last the whole day. We could float down river, uh, with some, um, endure elements. So I've got endure elements, I've taken that. And then I've taken three water walks. Those all sound like good options. I'll show you how Wolf, um, Maya, and myself were able to find you guys. We'll, we'll find this dwarf merchant the same way. And if we find no other way forward we can always come back here and uh and use this road ahead but perhaps we might uh bypass the draw with this other alternate route and he might have some wisdom for us some other routes that uh even maya does not know about well i, I doubt sounds that to take the river <laughs> it would be easier with a boat but i don't see one around so we can uh, with this magic, we can all walk on the water. <clears throat> so let me know when you are ready to go, and I will enchant us. Yes, we will walk on the waters. All right. So water walk's good for uh, like one person per level. I want to make sure, though. Or, or maybe it's up to six people. Yeah, it's up to six people. So one person per level. So we're good. Water walk it is. I feel like the Messiah. <laughs> Who? <laughs> I am not Never your god. <laughs> Never heard of this dark person you mentioned. <laughs> Okay, let me try to uh, finish leveling up Maya right quick. I'm not sure what was going on with him. Your thing?
I may have inadvertently crossed the streams on him. I have more than one file for <clears throat> Mr. Maya here. That might have been the problem. Let's see. What are you guys short on that he's been helping you with? Anything? Dungeoneering? Um, I took Dungeoneering this level. So I've got a 8 or 9, plus 8 or 9 in it. I think Phil's, Phil and uh, Michael are both good at Dungeoneering too. Arcana, Dungeoning History, and Local. Let's see here. Local's my... my Lo local's your jam? I, my jam. I have Arcana, Geography, Nature, Local. Okay. Yeah, I only have one in Dungeoneering, so it's only plus eight. That's eight. Okay, so Geography is will be his thing, I guess. Oh, Dungeoneering, we need actually more than Geography. <laughs> oh, you do need Dungeoneering. Okay. Yeah, because uh, like Michael didn't, Michael didn't have it, and Phil and I only have one rank in it. Yeah, okay, all right, well, that would be his thing then. And I have five ranks in Geography. <sighs> Boom, all right. <clears throat> well, we can drop seven ranks in it then. Is he overcompensating for something? <laughs> <laughs> for the party. <laughs> for our shortcomings? The, Absolutely. The need of the many outweigh the need of the few. It's an old dwarven proverb. Clearly it's incorrect. The needs of these few. <laughs> much, much more important than the needs of any many. Especially evil story. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call him evil Snorri? Is he not Snorri? <laughs> do you not see my goatee? <laughs> I now got a beard. He has goatee now. Can't say beard <laughs> now. Beard is all in. <laughs> it's just like evil Cartman. <laughs> okay. Fingers crossed that this works. Ding ding. Converting everything here. El Worko Fabioso. Air Potter Sal. <laughs> Come on. Ah. Did it work? No, it didn't work. Still give me the same error. Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay, regardless. So it's going to take you uh, close to four hours to make your way along the river before you get to where you can get to dry right. land or wetland, if you will. I will tick off the appropriate mythic point. Good, good. together here. And that way when we next see you, it will be easy to get you all together. Which takes you back into the Underdark once more. Hi ho, hi ho. Walk the water we go. <clears throat> if you'd like, you can uh, reacclimate yourself 
to your surroundings. You can see Holoth, the city of spiders, or Holoth, depending on one's uh, how fluid one is in Drowies. Down here? Down to the south, yes. You know, there are at least two major entrances to it, if not more, um, more hidden, forgotten back roads. But one being the, the very long road that you're actually on will eventually circle and go down to Holoth before it, uh, or, yeah, before it splits off, leading down to Stonehome. But uh, you can see there on the map, Embla, the dwarven city that is currently facing the drow occupation. much closer than its sister city of Stonehome, which lies further off the map. But you guys are able to uh, make it through what it sounds like two castings of Snorri's spells to keep you all running along the waters there, so... Or, in fact... It's not uh, not completely dark, because as always, Wolf does need light though periodically you can turn the light off as there is like low light generated by strange fungi along the walls and that sort of thing odd luminescent lichens lighting your way as you run along and crouch through the available spaces following the the underground river as it winds through the underdark it eventually opens back up into a, a larger cavern illuminated by strange fungi and mushrooms and there you see on the far bank up a few uh, few levels there like platforms like rising steps small mushroom establishment of flint storm hammer the uh, the dwarf of and craftsman formerly of Embla but who was at one time encouraged to leave the city because he was he would sell and offer trade to upper worlders before it was what was in, cool in vogue yes <laughs> <laughs> but not just upper worlders he would sell to lower deeper dwellers and whatnot as well those darn dirty to draw. So he has an assortment of whatever you need in way of the basics, both in terms of equipment and rations and like uh, basic potions or scrolls or that sort of thing. But he's not like a major city or anything like that. So you're not going to be able to dump off all of your uh, equipment, but you can talk to him and perhaps find out uh, more information that might help you. All right. Uh, we'll unload what we can. Um, I can change some coin if that would be. That would save me some weight. Although it doesn't really matter. I've just got a bunch of platinum and or um, copper and silver. If he can accommodate. So we trade. Uh, well, let's see what he has. Okay, so aside from what I mentioned, he's got he doesn't have much else for sale. He does have one really nice plus one gauntlet and a swan boat feather token. But aside from that, he doesn't have any other uh, magic items. Well, you got to understand, not a lot of people come this way uh, on their way back to the long road. Oh, you don't need to explain yourself. 
It's been some time since I've seen some upper worlders like yourselves as well. Mostly it's been drought. Uh, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we'll take your swan boat for the token, though. For 225 gold pieces. How much his boat is? Yep. It lasts for one one day and can carry uh, 32 people if we need to. We can use the group fund. We got 225? Or uh, no, 450 it's, it is. We got plenty. Okay, cool. So it's 450? 450, maybe buy some uh, some potions or maybe a wand. If he has a wand. That was his limit. <laughs> right, what or kind of wand do you want? Oh, just curative. Cure light wounds. Yeah. Does he have that? He says, well, uh, I don't have one today, but if you could come back tomorrow to give me time to make my way down to uh, the outpost, maybe do a bit of, of spit swapping, and uh, I can come up with one for you. Okay, yeah. Was, uh, is there a place around here where we could sleep for the day? Or, or sleep overnight? Is we're kind of uh, on the road as you would. Well, this isn't real hospitable uh, environs, if you will. This is mostly camping, roughing it territory. Just uh, I've had to set up my home here since I, I was forced to leave the war, the dwarven warrens. Those years. I was just ago. asking if you minded us sleeping on the floor over there. No, I don't mind. That's what I'm saying. It's uh, you know. It's <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking for a five star at the Hilton. <laughs> To, to, to each their own. I don't have anything to offer you, but I'm not going to stop you from, from camping out. It'd just be nice if you cleaned up after yourself. The uh, the river's a little cold this time of year. I was kind of hoping for an indoor pool. Oh. Well, everything's indoor here. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> just got to make your way down to the steam tunnels. That'll warm you up some. Do you have any uh, old wizard spell books or anything kicking around? Scrolls, perhaps? Magical writings? Uh, or anything maybe you, you need identifying that you have not been able to? No, nothing that rightly comes to mind. I'll explain to you what I've got here in my stock. Well, that's fine then. Got this really nice gauntlet. He slides it on and like, smashes on the shelf. <laughs> nice and solid. Some of this uh, salve of slipperiness, you know, if you're having trouble with the misses, some folks do. <laughs> but... Yep. All right. Uh, how about some just some paper? Potions and oils. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good. Got some mushroom paper here. It's a little bit more moist than what you're used to upper world way, but. Uh... <clears throat> You'd be surprised what I'm used to. Not a lot of dry papers down here. I used to scribe my scrolls on birch bark. So. That'll work fine. Ah. If we spent a day, if we spent a day here, I could brew some potions. I may yeah. need a few. I was thinking the same thing. I could uh, do some scrolls. Okay, very well. You can opt to do that. Um, as noted, while you guys are hex crawling, you can opt to travel, which is pass through the hex and into the adjacent one, which is what you just did. Or you may explore, look for interesting features within the hex, so you guys can stay here and basically explore. Or you can retrace the path and look for something that was previously encountered in a hex. Well, also interact, staying at one location for some time, camp, resting and sleeping, or forage, which is hunting, fishing, and otherwise foraging for food. Speaking of which, yeah, I did want to mention that you guys have been down here about three days now, so you'll need to adjust your rations and water accordingly. Okay, we're right along the river, so. 
I always take uh, create water anyway, so I don't really worry about water so much. Right, but while you guys were separated. Yes. What did the other guys have, though? Um, it's probably the river. I don't need any food or water. They give us that. Oh, yeah. That's right, you took that potion for the last, past few days, right? Potion of sustenance, what was it called? Uh, it's symbiosis. Yep. That's why my whole body is covered with mushrooms. mushrooms. That's right, the mushrooms. <laughs> Which you guys might get a little for eight days. Eight days, very good. So you guys might get a little twitchy seeing him write on mushroom paper. <laughs> and also, uh, Flint Stormhammer is like munching on mushroom chips and looking at you guys really strangely. It's like crunch, crunch, stare, crunch, crunch, stare. Does that hurt when you do that? Crunch, crunch. It does not. Although it itches sometimes. Uh, gentlemen have rashes that can be purchased. <laughs> yes, he does have rations. Yes, here you go. Plenty of, of uh, mushroom wraps with mushroom soup and nice mushroom tea to go with it. And here's a few... Uh, mushroom nibbles to snack on. It's quite a versatile <laughs> little fungus it is. Mushrooms. So you guys can camp out and do that. So he does have a little bit of like gold and gems that he can uh, use in exchange for buying and selling, but not much. We'll, we'll give him uh, the money up front. And then whatever he doesn't buy, he brings back. You were wanting what? The Wanda Pure Light Wounds? Yeah, if we could. Okay. And then I'll grab up um, a bunch of scrolls of Care Light Wounds. Because we've got the rest of today and all of tomorrow. If we also gave him, if we gave him some things like, uh, so like the two like crossbows and things like that to take the trade. Yeah, we could get like money value. Whatever, he'll give us money value. Give him that kind of stuff. For the gold, I mean for the uh, Care Light. Yeah, exactly. So uh, list off to Jamie what we have. And then we'll make up the rest in gold. Because the yeah, crystalline quarterstaff masterwork is 600 gold. I mean, 300 if you sell it. So we can take that for the cure light as well as the like, two light crossbows. Are they masterwork light crossbows or are they just regular? I think it's just regular. So it's like 30 gold pieces each. So 15. Okay, so 360. Also has a. Got that. Plus one short sword, that's twenty three ten. That's sixteen fifty. Ah uh, no, it's um, eleven fifty. Oh, I'm, I had. Told oh, them. all all together, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if we have enough, if we have enough for two. Yeah, if you can muster up two, then. Two what? Two cure light wands? Yeah. Yes, you can. Oh, okay. We get a magic short sword, um, a fancy um, masterwork wand, some other weapons, and various gems and stuff like that. Giving them roughly what? Would you say like sixteen hundred and fifty gold pieces worth of stuff? That's the the sale value stuff too. Not okay. even retail. Retail is almost like three grand. <clears throat> yeah, he can work with that. Okay, hold on. Let me grab something there.
Okay, so he tells you he's going he's going to make the trick down to uh, row two, which is uh, a settlement that's um, that's hospitable to upper worlders and uh, lower worlders alike, and it's one of the last few places um, on the the edge of the frontier of the underworld where people can go and buy and sell and trade and that sort of stuff. Um, oh, why is it? Why did we go with you then? Oh, okay. Well, I guess I, I could take you there, but uh, I'd be a bit concerned about your safety if I'm taking you in a group. See, uh, it's much easier and faster for me to go by myself. I go through small winding okay. tunnels rather than having to, you know... Okay, uh, I'll stay in Scribe Scrolls. I don't care. To, to guide such a large group of Make sure everyone was safe by guiding you through all. I get it. You have a lady friend you like to visit. Fair enough. No problem. <laughs> Go ahead. Why does it uh, have to be a lady? We want to cramp your style. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. Yes, for you see, Rotu is one of the final uh, uh, settlements uh, up this way before. Uh, well, pretty much until you get to Embla Stone Home, and then. Keskarax being the last vestige of civilization in the upper regions of the lower worlds. But like I said, uh, I wouldn't mind guiding you. It'd just take longer. But if you want me to get your stuff, I can get there and back much quicker. Fair enough. With that, he shuts the little the little windows and latches and everything on his mushroom store closes it up uh, keep an eye on things for me while I'm out won't you thank you of course <clears throat> he puts on some sort of boots and then walks off on the water and right before he uh <laughs> go to <laughs> What do you do? No sense motive. <laughs> no sense motive, huh? <laughs> 16. I don't have much in it. <laughs> Just to be sure if he... Yeah? If he doesn't come back, he no longer has a home. <laughs> <laughs> burn, we'll burn this thing to the ground. <laughs> that only seems fair. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure that luck will stop us. Yes, well, you sense that he was telling you the truth in in that uh, row two lines beyond the scope of today's adventure. So he literally yes. cannot take you there. Uh, but enough. if you want to plan to go there, you know, you can you can make plans to do that on another day, and he can guide you. Yeah, guys. So that's what you sense from him. <laughs> The many perils of being loose in the sandbox. Yes. It's actually better. I, I can make a bunch of scrolls. <laughs> yes, but he uh, he does tell you about it. So you know now you know of Rotu, the frontier of the underworld. It stands as, as a solitary, unique settlement in the underworld, its founding principles being solidarity and tolerance among the cornucopia of races that call it home. From the diversity of this melting pot of cultures, true innovations spring forth, ideas promoting advances found nowhere else, which in turn make Rotu an enigma most wondrous, sought after by explorers and merchants alike, and a beacon of light shining from the darkest depths of the realms below. The word Rotu meaning a gathering of races is a perfect way to describe this remote settlement far from civilization and on the frontier of the deeper darker places of the underworld the Ahuling, Koliatur Dodalig, Draker Dryder, Drow Devergard, Wayord, Funglet Witwork, Plural Snif Snurf Nibblin Vestradi, these work races all make their home here albeit in limited numbers This bizarre settlement came to be not by some odd circumstance, but through the simple 
stirring of war in the so-called civilized areas of the underworld. Holoth, city of spiders, had begun to raid caravans from Embla, Stonehome, and other cities, sometimes tainting slaves, leaving mercantile goods to rot or be raided by various warring factions. While war is big business for the mighty, most common people, regardless of species, simply want to live and be free. From this desire, Rotu was conceived. Groups of refugees and merchants, seeing the signs of the, the inexorably approaching conflict, began to stream out from the myriad caves and tunnels of the underworld, traveling even deeper, seeking a safe place to call home. The prospective settlement's location had to fulfill a variety of complex prerequisites. Geographically defensible, difficult to lay siege to, and needed to be able to support mushroom crops. So it was built abo above a giant stalagmite. Where all the various races can come and trade and buy and sell as they like. But uh, anyway, so he'll take you there and introduce you. If that's something you guys decide you want to do sometime. Uh, but for now, that's off... Uh, that is a sidetrack on your way deeper to Embla, if not Stonehome or Holoth. Haven't quite decided where you guys are going to, to settle in and what you're going to do, but uh, let's give you some time to figure that out. So, Okay, so the, go the day goes uh, relatively quietly. guys don't find much though as you poke around this rather large cavern uh, you, you do find uh, laying amongst some of the slagtites the skeleton of a, a young dragon long dead and gone but its bones have now become part of the cavern you're not sure looking at it what could have caused it to die but there it is. Okay, so the next morning is when uh, Flint, or uh, yes, when Flint Stone Stormhammer makes his way back. He's got your two wands for you. And whatever else uh, it was that you needed from him in terms of rations or basic supplies or whatever. Okay, cool. I'll take one of those wands. Does anybody else cast it? Or is it a use magic device for everybody else? Maya. Okay. Yeah, and give it to Maya. Yeah, you can certainly use one if you you give him one. So, like I was telling Phil, uh, you know, I mean, I generally don't like to have two NPCs, but but well, Wolf is helping to fill in for, uh, you know, the meat shield portion of the party while uh, Ingri is out. You know, I mean, hopefully Ingri comes back at some point, but. If not, in the meantime, that's what you've got for Wolf for. Um, so you can do all the roles for Wolf. It's yeah, no problem. You got Wolf, and then Maya can help out as the bard and whatnot still. But uh, yeah, you just have to uh, just have to treat them like the meat shield. It's just too bad no he is uh, not mythic, but that's just the way it goes with companions. It's cool. Rare to get a mythic companion. So yeah, so the day is uh, relatively quiet. You guys are able to do your crafting and your convalescing or whatever else, meditating while you wait and you remain relatively undisturbed. All right. So then, let's continue our road. 
on all road. Face was a little bit steeper incline this time, uh, heading on the dark road down. Yeah, and Maya will tell you, um, you know, these old roads are are well traveled there are many tributaries and many side caves and caverns that have yet to be explored but you always make the best time if you just continue on your way keep your nose down and keep your destination ahead of you okay so <clears throat> You guys are making your way down the road. Remember, this involves climbing and, you know, jumping and swinging and throwing ropes and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So mostly, most of this is going down the steep incline. So it's almost like Batman and Robin going up the side of the building <laughs> in the old uh, 1960s TV show. But you see, as it levels out below you, there's the uh, telltale glow of a campfire. Interesting. So, do you, uh, what do you do as you see the, the campfire before you get close enough to be able to see what kind of occupants uh, surround it? I would say Lucian should uh, quietly look what the people are looking like if they might be hostile or friendly or yep wolf extinguisher light ah good I have well, wolf has low light vision from my orphan dragon blood so he can actually see in low light that never gets brought up for some reason though you are too you busy shaming me for vision. Yes, you're too busy shaming me for my lack of dark vision. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just double checking to make sure. Check. Give me one thing. It's and it, and it's uh, night since it is there. Let, let me check a spell. I may I think I have one like a little shadow spy spell. This would be maybe about mid afternoon, but. Oh, it's good afternoon. Okay. You're so deep under the ground. I mean, everything is essentially night. Everybody's oh, yeah. kind of on their own relative timeline. It's like day and night when you choose it to be, you know. <laughs> I will, uh, Always cast invisibility. Oh, hold on, let me check this one. Check this one. Right. I just want to see how far he goes. Can um, I have something called shadow of sight, but I have to be. Ninety feet. Once I'm in ninety feet, I can cast it, and it should, the spell allows the subject to look into a mundane shadow within thirty feet, plus five feet per level, and therefore he can look the nearby shadow and out the other part of the shadow around the corner, beyond the obstacle, beyond you know, behind himself or any distance, basically, basically spy. So while under the effect of spell, he can shift back and forth between normal vision and shadow sight as a free action. I can cast that. I use a mythic point to go and have it prepped. Okay. Get within 95 feet, you know, cast that to appear and see what I see in here. Okay, so you see 
what appears to be three dwarves huddled around a campfire, and they are uh, eating and and drinking and and uh, trying to warm themselves. Appears to be three dwarves. These are dwarves, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they appear to be just dwarves. Just yeah. yeah. Okay. They uh, uh, underground. Uh, they they begin to to go by the distinction of being dwarf. So it's yeah. at, at most they would be dwarf. Yeah. Oh. Aren't they evil? <laughs> no. That's okay. just that's just the under underground pronunciation for the dwarf. That's what they, they they prefer not to call each other dwarves. They call each other dwarves. The three dwellers above, up, up there, about the campfire. Doesn't appear to be. Appearance can be deceiving, but doesn't appear to be of the evil lot. Yeah, Maya oh, says. But one never knows. Surely they would greet uh, uh, one of their fellow kinfolk. I don't see uh, any major difficulties. Let this drow all among us, maybe. Hopefully, <laughs> <Right. laughs> we we'll announce that we have no bad intentions and continue on our way. There should be no trouble. If there is, they will rue it. Ah, well, mm -hmm. you just calm down there, evil story. We will go about <laughs> just planning the murder of my kinsmen <laughs> just so quickly we'll try talking to him first that's what I said I think his ears are still affected by that thunderstorm these are babies we're talking about <laughs> that wolf says no no babies those were monsters monstrosities abominations <laughs> Okay, so Maya says, ah, what are we waiting on? May as well greet them. And uh, he walks out and, and offers a greeting. Oh, and salutation, kinsfolk. I am kinsfolk. I am Maya of Embla, son of Gorin, grandson of Dwelin and Balin. And he goes into that whole dwarven dissertation. And I greet thee. And, uh, I am, I am Snorri, son of Hafnir. I don't know any further back than that. We bid you good day, or good night, or whatever time it is. And I am a wolf, dragon slayer, hero to men and the women. I greet thee. <laughs> But not babies. May you all be. So the uh, three dwarves turn towards you. You see that one is older than the others. He stands first, and the other two uh, mimic his actions, and he bows slightly. Uh, Welcome, and I greet thee, for I am Doran Silversmith of the Silversmith clan of Embla. We see that you are dwarven and upperworlders alike, though they're behind you. One of the foul, dark, dark ones. He is, he is our friend. He, goes he is our friend. He's fumbling to grab his dagger and his sons are grabbing their crossbows and stuff when they see Nathander come walking up out of the shadows. His weapons would be no use to you, but he is a friend. Do you know? What do you do when that happens, Nathander? Um, I will duck. I, I, uh, I mean you no harm. Uh, Maya just uh, 
wanted me to help him free his home city. And uh, Silversmith nods and puts his takes his hands from his weapons and motions for his sons to lower their crossbows and he goes, I these are these are dark times and dark times call for for difficult alliances, I see. Ah oh, well you not are welcome, difficult. Maya of Embla, you are not unknown to me. Before the we learned of the nature of the Dark Huff, we had already met Mithander and knew he was quite a good person. So it's not a difficult association for us at all. Ah, well, you must understand, I am but a simple dwayorg. Uh, I work as an engineer in my city of, of Embla, my clan having lived there for hundreds of years. We, uh, we don't mind dealing with the darker races, but we're not too used to, to seeing them on a regular occasion understand that we we had to flee from our homes our our clan homes overrun by the drow as they make their way through Embla conquering each clan that refuses to bend the knee to them and their dark mistress but come warm yourselves by our fire we would share our food and our drink here we have some meager ale that we brought with us when we escaped. Uh, we don't want to impose on you. We're actually heading to the uh, to Emba to see what we could do about your problem. Could you tell us what you know about the, uh, the layout of the city and who's encamped where? Uh, yes, well, the, dr the drow armies have taken over The main gates and they hold the merchant circle hostage in the center of the city they're the 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 lords of the city are for, are forced to conduct the affairs of the city in accordance with the will of the drow matron the orders coming from deep within the city of spiders below Patrols regularly line the streets, and the forces often gather to invade the clan homes that still show resistance, breaking down their doors and smashing their barriers, dragging out all who would offer fight and putting them to the sword. Uh, if you seek to go there, you you have your your hands plenty full. We've matched steel against these dark elves before and come out quite well. We do not fear them. Uh, talking in Emblos that Maya of Embla was long dead, that he had left for the upper worlds, but the drow had hunted him down and killed him and his companions, put to death beneath their arrows. But here you are, as I live and breathe. I think he's talking to you, Maya. Hi, here I am. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> at, at some point, it just becomes, you know, I'm just doing all Run. the talking. So, Can I get my yeah. <laughs> that thunderstone was mighty powerful. <laughs> it got it was wolf. See, see how powerful it is. Yeah. Good Maya. <laughs> Maya verbal speech. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to see if I had a good uh, picture of dwarves camped out and I could throw up while I was doing all that, that talking. Is there any source of water? 
there are sources of water there uh, you can find various streams that run through the caverns crossing here and there and points and all around you if you have receptacles I could fill you up I, I could magically create water oh. I'm sure you've seen it done yes um, well if you fill me this jar with water but I could just take water from the stream it's no problem it's a cantrip I can do it all day long Then, uh, yeah, fill this up with water, and I mix some of my own herbs into it. Okay. Then I I'll will... offer to fill any containers they have up to save them from going out to scrounge and forage. Many thanks, friend. That saves us from having to go out and scrounge and forage. And I will cast tears to wine. On the jaw. <laughs> then I will cast tear two wines on the jar so we have meat for the night. Ah, I see. Yeah, we might as well stay here and chill out with these guys for a little while. I see why this was an easy alliance for you. Well, any dark elf that has mead is. Worthy of sharing my campfire. Come, friend, come. If you want more, just tell me. Yeah, well, maybe we spend the day getting um, as much information about uh, Embla from um, Maya and himself. I guess Maya hasn't been there for a while, so he might not know any of the more recent changes okay so what is uh, it we'll maybe try and cobble we'll maybe try and cobble together a rough map and and where forces have been gathered and stuff like that important places to visit uh people who might still be alive that might be um okay. we might be able to rally to our cause that kind of stuff while you guys are talking to them getting information i'll i might as well grab a couple more scrolls It's just supplies at this point. I would like to um, make a card. Uh, yes, a card from the path we've been using since now. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, wow. Did you put any, any points into it? Yes, I did, but I rolled a three. <laughs> like, seriously. Every time I try to uh, draw a card, it's like a three or a two. Well, listen, uh, 11 uh, draw is... Draw a map, okay. Yeah, 11 is at least serviceable. I mean, you can you can tell. Okay, this I, you know what? Uh, I'll, give, uh, I'll give Michael my reroll. Okay, there you go. You don't need to. You can take the it's just for a if card. You like. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a one this time. There you go. That was well worth it. <laughs> oh, very good. From a three okay. to an eighteen. Very good. Okay, so that one is is good enough that you're you're even able to uh, to remember the earlier passages that you kind of ruined beforehand and finished out your map from the time that you entered the underworld from Krelgar's Keep up to here including uh, the diversion with uh, the cave-in you guys having to be uh, separated but you've uh, done a pretty good job at uh, getting everything marked down nice thank you uh, Snorri I used to done a fine map it's that it would be invaluable I hope it will be. Okay, so I think probably the easiest thing to do is show you guys Embla. Because um, I'd be willing to bet that the engineer probably has a map on. 
Ah. Ah, uh, sure, I can Tell me how it. dire is the situation in Embla. Ah, uh, it's been overrun by Drow. Pretty dire. It's dire indeed. Yeah, but, um... Would we have time to make a, a trip to Stone Home to gain allies, or should we go there as soon as possible? Uh, we have nothing but time at this point, my friend. Where the die has been cast, the drow have launched their attack on all who lie above them. Today it is Embla, tomorrow it will be Stone Home, and beyond that, no doubt the upper world are villages above. Today, Embla. Tomorrow, the upper world! <laughs> You're rooting for the wrong team. <laughs> <laughs> I just have these evil fantasies every once in a while. <laughs> as long as they stay fantasies. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, uh, actually, I might. Uh, I was gonna say I had the map with the key on it, but I don't seem to have it uploaded. Um, you could, uh, you could do that in, um, like the chat on the off screen kind of thing. I'm assuming we're not going to get to Embla tonight, so. You're not going to get to Embla tonight. Yeah, we can downtime it. <laughs> As of right now, I mean, we're, uh, yeah, I mean, we're hex crawling, at least until you guys make the first trek across. Yeah. So it just takes some time. But uh, the keyed map will make it a little easier to explain to you, so that's why I was. That's what I mean. We can just um, we can do this downtime ish. I can upload it for between you. games. So what is it you want? You want let's be honest. Unless there's a permanent re unless there's a permanent record, we're not going to probably remember the details. I would just as many details as we could get. Like I say, we can you can do this off camera, in between games, kind of thing, so we don't bog it down. Because honestly, we're probably not going to remember in a month and a half when we get there. That is true. When we actually get to, to the game where we get there. Okay, so Ambla is known as the City of Light to the dwarves. Uh, it began as a remote outpost of Stonehome, a site where the dwarves could trade with the other underworld denizens. denizens. About four decades ago, um, the mayor came into power and founded the new Merchant Circle. current mayor is Torin Stonetooth, who was elected to mayor, uh, being the first to do so without actually asking for the position. But he was so trusted by his fellow dwarves that uh, they thought he'd be the best for the job. Um, so the town is essentially divided up into uh, the merchant areas um, surrounding the merchant circle. Uh, there's a, a, a fungus farm there are uh, the major gonjolas, which are those large jewel-looking um, structures. Those are gonjolas. Um, and they are uh, some of the centers of civilization. Um, one being the Justice Gonjola, where the laws and, and uh, rule of order is uh, discussed. Um, 
the other two being the trade gonjola and then finally the celebration gonjola uh there are various temples throughout the city of course uh smiths blacksmiths armorers clothers jewelers leather workers uh various homes to the guilds stonemasons various traders warehouse district so anyway so the city itself is just uh is it's overrun um there are regularly drow battalions that come come in almost every other day and either relieve the the drow that are here or they continue on uh somewhere else down uh down the dark road or perhaps towards Stonehenge or one of the other uh locations maybe even Keskarax uh it's understood that the merchant circle is currently held captive they're ostensibly allowed to continue their business but they're having to they're having to uh, oversee the trade and business um, beneath the drow rule where heavy taxes have been imposed of course the drow are in command of the gates in and out of the city um, according to the engineer though uh, he and Maya are talking and they discuss the, the front and the, the back of the city. You can see there on the map, down at the bottom, that's the main gate. So, now obviously that's the closest way to enter from the long road, which you guys are on. But there's also a way in from the back, but uh, it's not really used and it's they're considered ancestral and ancient passageways there at the northern part of the map. And that is one section that's not as heavily guarded. But you do learn from the engineer and his sons that various uh, dwarven clans are still resisting. So there is actually still infighting going on all throughout the city where a lot of the clans have managed to just shut the gates to their own particular structures and buildings and retreat down to lower levels as needed. And, um, continue fighting the drow as long as, as they can. Who controls the gate? The drow control the gate. Okay. So it would be a good idea to be stuff in the room. No, I can disguise myself into drow. And we can also say, like, you're prisoners if we go through the front. But it may be smart to go through the back. Or the rear. Less guarded and such. There's many ways in, invisibly. Hans Drow. We'll figure something out when we get there. Seems to be a river in the north we could use. I'm sure there's many ways in. We can uh, we gather as much knowledge as we can about this place and uh, we'll formulate our plans on the way. So we'll, uh, I'll, Snorri will take some time then and write down notes of what's what's where and stuff like that um with mythander making a, a, a rough map from his map if he has one well we could copy the map that engineering has yeah that's what i mean and then we'll, we'll make our own notes and And I will try to make a copy of the map and yeah. Um. 
Okay. We're still a few days away from Embla. be able to see the key now. Once that comes into view, yeah. Okay, well, you continue on from uh, where you encountered the dwarves, and it is relatively quiet. You get in another day's travel, so you're about two days out from Embla. So it is time to camp. All right, we'll set up our usual watches and uh, our usual um, defenses. I'll re-up all my uh, I'll re-up all my overnight spells false life mage armor dark vision so you guys camp in a cavern that is covered with spotted fungi they look like ordinary mushrooms for the most part and actually under the light that um well, Wolf has when he usually has his light on, but they also glow very brightly when it's completely dark. So, uh, they actually provide a uh, low light throughout the cavern. Excellent. Okay. Let us. Might I know if they may be dangerous? Dangerous, those fungi? Uh, sure, make a uh, dungeoneering or knowledge nature check. Knowledge nature it is. <laughs> Roll the three again. Dungeoneering master there here with us. Uh, so you don't. Valid. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt you. You don't recognize them as anything dangerous. I mean, eighteen is is still pretty knowledgeable, mind you. <laughs> Random encounter. <laughs> we need a card for that, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so the map appears. It's like, oh, not a map of it. Oh, it's only here on the.
position your campfire here. Okay, so it's on last watch. So who was who was under who was in command? Last, last watch. watch. Okay, Nathander. All right, so everyone else assume your sleeping positions. Nope. Then just pick whichever one makes you happy. I will share with my good friend Maya. We will keep each other warm. And people think I'm the gay one. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we have the biggest beard. See, you are all chinless. You're all hairless on your chins. <laughs> Give me chin, chin. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was the fairy wings. <laughs> so make a perception check while you're on watch there, Mithander. Mm hmm. Didn't treat it same perception. Oh, very good. Okay. Okay, so uh, you are on watch when suddenly the ground starts rumbling. As though something really large were coming down the cavern towards you. Is it what coming near? <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's coming your direction. And then I will go to this tent and uh, kick towards Wool because I know he's a, a slow waker. <laughs> <laughs> loud. <laughs> you wake everybody up. <laughs> and if I have time, I'll move to the next tent and try to quietly wake Lucian. And then I, I go to. Snorri's tent. Okay, well, stop at Wolf's tent. That's as far as you're going to make it before we roll in H2. Okay. If I, if I see a creature, I will uh, scream, wake up, but <laughs> if I don't, I... Yeah, with that roll, you see this creature come, it's barreling toward you down the tunnel. Except you mostly see it. Hey, from little the front. Susie, wake up! <laughs> you see it from the front end, where it's all teeth and spit. Oh, great! Serious bad. Oh no, I forgot. <laughs> what did you forgot? <laughs> I got my character sheet. Shame. I know. Ah, uh, join the party. I do it all the time. Oh no.
<laughs> Did you do it again, Lucy? Nope, you're on there. Since I know we'll will be naked, I want to remind him that he should drink the potion I gave him. That's a good idea. They both may be naked when they Okay, so well Wolf, he woke up. So he's getting up and he says, uh Thunder, how many times I tell you not to wake me up in the middle of the night? What's that? Is, it, is that a dog barking? It sounds like... There's a big worm coming toward us. What did I tell you about that? <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you about you and your big worms? Stop that. <laughs> A big worm! You just head up <laughs> and fight this fucking Drake. He jumps up and starts grabbing his ear. And he kicks Maya awake. Lucien! Okay, so make a uh, perception check. See if he woke up when uh, okay. Mithander started yelling. I'm assuming when he started yelling at the. <laughs> Yelling, yeah, it's saying whatever it is that it says that we can hear. Lord Lucian, I am sorry to bother you, but there appears to be some sort of gargantuan beast. Okay, so you hear him, you wake up. What do you do? Grab my rapier and go out of the tent. Bill, can you adjust your mic a little bit? It's a little low oh. tonight. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Yeah, I, I said I grab my uh, rapier and I get out of the tent. That's what two move at. Okay. I was getting to where I was like leaning in trying to hear you and I was like, oh, that's not going to help. Yeah, I got pushed down to my chin. <laughs> Snorri. Don't wake up. Snorri's still asleep. All right, so Maya gets up and grabs his finger symbols or whatever it is that he uses when he's telling the story. And his two hammers. Ah, uh, perhaps it shall be hammer time yet. What is Can that? Reroll story. I give it to uh, Mithandir. Oh, okay. He did use it. Okay, so he doesn't care. That looks like a giant worm. Ah, we're good and truly fucked. So he grabs He's his running. pack and runs to the edge of the <laughs> cavern. He's like, uh, I wouldn't cluster together if I were you. <laughs> you know of this worm. I just know it's a giant worm. He just rolled a one. On the house. Okay. Can so you he... put me Thunder in the turn order? I forgot to click on this token. I'm so sorry. Oh. Okay, sorry. Thought I had put you in there already. What was your uh, initiative? Well. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mithander. You can go over and wake up uh, Snorri if you want. It'll take a standard action. I will do that, yes. I run over to here and wake up 
Snorri. Okay, Snorri, you can take your action waiting around okay. here. Okay. All right. Um, knowledge Arcana, you said? Yes. Do it. Twenty-nine. Okay, it is a purple worm. This enormous worm is covered with dark purple plates and chitinous armor. Its giant tooth-filled mouth is the size of an ox. Dark vision, tremor sense, whole lot of hit points. How high is the cavern? Cavern is pretty big, uh, a couple hundred feet up. Oh, okay, I'll start. Le I'll cast levitate and uh, levitate up. Uh, what is it? Uh, Twenty feet. This creature can burrow under the ground, right? Yes. Okay. It can burrow, um, so they generally bite, and when they bite, bite they grab and try to swallow their prey. Swallow your hole. Okay. They have, uh, yeah, so they have swallowed hole, um, and they have a poison stinger. Yeah. Um, the poison uh, is rather difficult to see. Uh, save once around for six rounds, uh, losing strength, so rather insidious. Purple so, worms are giant scavengers that inhabit the deepest region, regions of the world, consuming any organic material they encounter. They're notorious for swallowing their prey whole. It's not uncommon to hear a group of adventurers vanishing down the ravenous maw of purple worm, screaming as they disappear one by one. Although they seek to consume living creatures, purple worms also consume vast amounts of dirt and minerals that they burrow underground. The insides of the purple worm may contain a considerable number of gemstones and other items able to withstand the corrosive acid inside its going. A purple worm usually claims a large underground cavern as its den, and while it returns here to rest and digest food, it spends the majority of its time on the prowl, burrowing, burrowing through the endless dark or slithering along established tunnels in the constant drive to feed its immense hunger. Uh, yeah, so I pretty much told you everything about it didn't have a lot of it's not a lot yeah. of complicated stuff it's big it yeah. bites it swallows <laughs> be careful of its poison take to the air if you can tremor sense yep tremor sense yell it <sighs> intern that's that's all I can pretty much do okay we'll put some wings on you I got a, a, a two arrow up there. I was up 20 feet high. Okay, is that what that is? Yeah. Just high enough to be out of its reach. Say it. I said you're no, just you're high enough anything. to be out of its reach. So uh, the purple worm comes barreling forward through the cavern and uh, it rears up with its body billowing beneath it as its large tooth maw gapes open, preparing to strike. Round two. Um, well, Volt says, ah, I shall die glorious in the ball of the purple worm. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go for it, Wolf. <laughs> There's really not much he can do except get swallowed holes unless you guys have a suggestion for him. Uh, well, he can cut his way out with those small weapons that he has, so he'll keep the short swords in his hand. Pretty sure you can uh, chop your way through them. I gave him two potions. He, sh he should drink both of them. 
There we go. Wolf remembers what Bethander told him like four seconds ago. He drinks okay. the potions. Well, you can drink one of them anyway, yeah. All right. So 50 50. So what's the first one? Uh, Well, I have a potion of. He drinks the second. Uh, that will be enlarged person. Okay. So he's enlarged. Okay, good. Ah! If only the mouth on this thing didn't have so many teeth. Lucien. Lucien cast uses a mythic power and cast fly. Good idea. <laughs> it moves up to 25 feet. He said with 20 feet was a basic range. Is this thing blind? Wouldn't matter, it can sense vibrations. I, I can see. I'm pretty sure it can. Okay. Can't, can't see it, not seeing. I said turn. Okay, so what is Maya going to do? Um, I'm the beast, Maya. I'm the beast! Well, if it can sense vibration, it could be blinded by the bard when he's just doing random shit with his instrument. <laughs> I, 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 I can't imagine it not being <laughs> able to see. He's just going to cast invisibility. He says, maybe if I hold still. There you go. <laughs> Don't point me out. Stop. Don't come this way. Oh, stop talking to me. Your giant footsteps will full stop. It will hear it you. Just, they're in that corner over there. <laughs> Alright, so he casts in this building. Mithander, back to you. Uh, I will go to here, and I will fly up in the air. 20 feet. And then I will cast haste. Oops, wrong one. Oh, nice. Maybe do it. That changes uh, what I'll do. Nice. Ah. Good, good. That will be the end of my turn. Okay. All right. So, Snorri, what do you do? I fly up another 20 feet and I levitate up another 20 feet and I cast lightning bolt. So he gets to make a, okay. see, a DC 17 reflex save for half damage. Okay, failed to save. Alright. Makes 35 points of damage. The worm bellows in pain as the lightning bolt illuminates it from the inside out. And turn. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, he makes his way over to chomp on some wolf meat. <laughs> wolf is yelling, "Ah! Come get me, purple worm! I do not fear you. Ah, witness me." Okay, and it's going to hit. So I know his AC is not that good. Plus, he has a penalty for being large. Yeah. He's large. And in charge. I think that's offset by the haste, though. 
Oh, you're right, it is, but it doesn't make any difference. No. He might be harder to swallow, though. I shall make it easier for him to swallow as I grease myself with the blood of my enemies. Ah. And I shall be known as the king of the double innuendo in all of the underworld. Ah. You might eventually pass through this purple worm's innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> I need one more die. Oh, the original. Okay. I roll the one. Seventeen points from the bite. Okay. Plus, it tries to grab him. I have no idea what his CMD is. Oh, it does not grab him. Yeah. It is actually up to date on his uh, character sheet. Yeah, but he's enlarged now, and his strength's gone up, and his size is bigger. And yeah, I have no idea now. Yeah. So it should be plus two to his CMB and CMD. Plus one for being large. That plus three altogether. Are you sure it's plus one, not plus four? I think it's just plus one. Yeah, I was just looking at the CMB bonuses as I was converting Mecha for the Rifts game. Oh, plus, okay. Plus one for large. Plus two. I always thought it was plus four. Huge. Plus four, minus four for small, minus eight for tiny. I could be wrong. Okay. <laughs> Chopped it for 17 points. Uh, he did not see MDM, so that is okay. his benefit. Uh, round three. Well, Wolf. Wolf, uh, five foot step, full attack. Does so it going to put him up to 1d8. Okay, so that doesn't matter on the uh, first one because I rolled a 1. Uh, 17 to hit on the second one. I don't know if there's pluses to hit with this or not. A large person. Yes. S strength um, bonus uh, might offset the, the size penalty. Swinging at uh, plus 15, plus 10. This is a secondary attack. Uh, plus 12, plus 7. Yeah, that's why I don't usually use uh, size changing spells. They don't work well on these. Right, yeah. Well, you only have to figure it out one time. It's the first time you guys cast it on. Where is... Uh... The target gets a plus two size bonus to strength, but it gets a minus two size bonus to dexterity and a minus one penalty on attack rolls and armor class. So the minus... Uh, let's see. The minus one attack roll penalty is offset by the plus one strength bonus. Uh, his armor class goes down by two... In total. But he does basically one more point of damage. That's what I'm getting from this. And he rolls 1d8. Alright. Said 1d6. <clears throat> Said 1d8 plus 8. Okay, so 10. <coughs> Uh, haste, so he's got one more swing. I took a... Oh, yeah, okay, one more full attack. 
Let's see here. Uh, is a 17 hit. 17. Okay. Let's end turn. Four wolf. I shall die a glorious death, brothers. Ah! Lucian, what do you do? Or you could just live a glorious life. <laughs> <laughs> I will cast Shadow Bolt, which is a 96 or DC 15 reflex half. Let's see. Next. Forty-three, nice. So, reflex. Okay, 15. he saved. Ah, all right. At least you got twenty-two. Okay. And it's move for the extra five feet, just in case it gets a little froggy. <laughs> Great worm Enter. recoils in pain as you blast it with your shadow energies. Good roll too, man. Ooh. Was a good roll. <laughs> Three and I. Yeah. All right. The special size modifier for creatures' combat mover defense is as follows. Yeah, it is plus one. It's it's when you get below, and so it starts doing the twos and the fours and the eights. Fine, diminutive, and tiny are all. Like the bonus is almost exponential. Okay, Maya is not sure what to do. Hmm. <laughs> he is going to. What's the range on invisibility? On invisibility, it is. Uh... Is it touch? Touch. Yep. Well, she could move up and make uh, Wolf invisible without, or he could. I keep thinking that she gives him a fifty percent miss chance. Toss this beer not to thy in. <laughs> I am dwarf through and through. Okay, yeah, he'll go up and you know, turn Wolf invisible. That's what. gonna have him just start climbing because he doesn't know what else to do to get away from this thing. Mithander! Uh, well, Wolf is not wearing his armor, isn't he? No. No. I wear my glorious mane. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> I will um, use touch injection and cast... Uh, armor of the serpent on him to increase his AC by six. Nice. Oh, very good. Probably better than his regular armor. It would be even better if he was wearing his armor and the spell, but he has to sleep naked. <laughs> So that'll put him at 19. Okay. Snorri. I'll fly up another 20 feet. Okay. And uh, I'll fireball the back end of that guy. Ooh, very nice. Let's see. Uh, DC 17 reflex save for half. Just shout at this back there. Oops, messed that up. That's okay. Makes a save. So 14 points of fire damage. No 
Okay. You guys are whittling him down with your big spells. And he's still pretty hardy. He's making that save. Okay. All right. Well, he's close enough now. He can hit Wolf with a full attack. So he goes for a bite. Succeeds. Damage. Rolled really low last time. Thirty points. And he's trying to grab. Okay, looks like he's gonna be grabbed this time. Yep, he's grabbed. Oh boy. Ah, uh, witness me, brothers! <laughs> uh, that was how we solved the problem of the wolf not having dirt vision. Okay. <laughs> and he's going to sting him while he's got him grabbed there, of course. Oh, man. Rolls in that 20, of course. What else? <laughs> Ow, okay. Maybe won't confirm. He confirmed. Yeah, uh, my wolf. It's a stinger. Maybe the stinger doesn't do that much damage. And he rolled really well. Well, on two of the dice, he <laughs> rolled really low on the other two. Okay, so that evened out. Isn't a wolf invisible? Shouldn't yeah, he get 50% chance? Mr. Oh, yes, that's right. Very good. Okay. Yes, 50%. All right, so we want uh, fifty-one. No, we we want no, up want, to, below under 50. fifty. Below fifty. Okay, so he didn't miss. What about the first one? Uh, that was a bite. Oh, okay. And then what about the sting? The sting? Okay, so the All sting right, missed. Cool. All right, so that's good. That was the crit. All right, but he is grappled. Okay. All right, cool. Well, Wolf. Ah, watch as I slide in glory. Watch, down this watch as I make a full attack. <laughs> Still hasted. Hopefully trying to roll better. <laughs> With only one arm, though, he's grappled. Nice. 31 and 24. Does a 24 confirm? 24 is not quite you did it twice. confirmed. Ah. Uh. 24 doesn't, doesn't hit? Oh, shit. Not unless we got right. another way to bump it up. Well, it hates it. It would be a plus one, right? Yes, that's true. 25. I, I put that on, though. I put it on his... Okay. On his okay. Yeah. I didn't do it on mine because mine keeps adding, so I didn't put it on my sheet. <laughs> okay. I hit twice for... Um, uh, the damage is different. Whatever it is. Yeah, so it's just regular damage then. So it's the 11 and then 11 and 16. 11 and 9. He said it was a D8 plus 8. Or... Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. So 16 and 11. So 27. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Whittling it down. Ah, damn it. So now he's visible. Yeah, now he's visible. Lucian. A bolt again. Under. Actually, I made a mistake and it should be actually 10d6. Because okay. it's a shout of this figure. Distinction always gets a plus. So roll that. I drowned you 
you out there with your sound effect. Okay. It's DC 15. He, he makes the save. So 15. I actually totally forgot about the shadow creature who runs up to him and strikes at him. Just okay. runs up to him. And let's see. It's a, it's a 15 AC 25 hit points. Plus two on this to hit. A 21, I'm assuming it this. Yeah, that's not going to get through its chitinous armor. Yeah. And then he'll move. He just moves over. Here. Just straight across. Okay. Uh, in turn. Maya, better do some healing or else the bolt is about to go bye bye. So, cure moderate. Three D eight plus eight. No, it's two D eight plus eight. So eighteen. Eighteen back to Wolf. Alright. Then I shall scoot back ever so slightly so the worm does not notice me. Methander. Uh, yes, I will do another touch injection and will cast full strength on the wolf. Maybe that will help him get out of this grapple. And then I will fly 30, uh, 30 feet high. That will be the end of my turn. You gave him a what on that? A bull strength? Bull strength, yeah. Bull oh, strength. Very nice. Okay, so another plus two to everything. Yep. Okay. Well done. Snorri Hafnir. Uh, I'll go down to the 30 foot mark and uh, a Scorchy Gray. So that will make it four. We get two rays at range touch. Where are we here? Fifteen and twenty-seven. Okay, they both hit. <laughs> Touch AC is ridiculously low. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> it's probably huge. Uh, 31, 31 points of damage. Oh, it's actually gargantuan, so it's it's above huge, so it's gargantuan. 31? Very good, okay. You guys are starting to get it within range now. <laughs> Maybe we let go after getting damaged so much. <laughs> ah, we're <ready. laughs> Spit him out. <laughs> Let go to <of> grapple. <laughs> it might if there was something closer it could bite onto. You. The shadow creature. Like my, <laughs> like my <Maya> of emblem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, right now it's got a hold of uh, the bull. Yeah. It's not where right. It's um, okay, so it maintains the grapple. And it's going to go for a swallow hole. That might be the best thing that happens to Wolf. You stab it in the side. Uh, yeah. So he's got to do another grapple. Maintain, which he does. He's got a ridiculous bonus. As long as it doesn't roll a one, essentially. Okay, so well, Wolf is swallowed. Oh, oh, witness me, brothers! <laughs> he is swallowed and takes bite damage. Alright, so he takes thirty two points from the bite. Alright, 
So will Wolf will still be considered grappled? Mm-hmm. From the inside? Yep. So just grappled. I was wondering if it was going to be pinned, but it's not pinned. Okay. No. All right. Round five. Well, Wolf. Wolf can still attack because technically these weapons are small. They are small. Yeah. It's yeah. useful if you're swallowed whole by a giant purple worm. Yeah. yeah. You should not miss. <laughs> it's just inside <laughs> it. It does have an AC <laughs> because of the toughness. So. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so 30 is the first attack with Grog. And yep. uh, oh, so that's be hit. Yep. So D8 plus 10 now. So that would be 18 points of damage. Uh, okay. The second attack with Grog would be a 24. Okay, that hits as well. All right. So 13 points. And okay, crew. with that, he cuts his way out. Comes All out, right. Splashing out onto the cavern floor. <laughs> <laughs> Should have stayed in. <laughs> ah, I have emerged three days later. Witness me, brothers. <laughs> <laughs> You're immortal now. The belly of the beast. <laughs> yeah, he should have stayed in, but he cut his way out. <laughs> Lucien. Oh, he's still alive. I know who's dead. He's he, still uh, alive. He just cut his way out. He did. <laughs> his, his offhand short sword was a critical right. hit. Same spell. DC that matters. Ten d six. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's add it. Hold on, let's add up the damage from the oh. crit. Yeah, so it was okay. uh, thirty one with the twenty seven to confirm. So it'll be twenty eight to confirm, or twenty nine to confirm. Uh, with Krook. Yeah, that confirms. Okay, so this would be 2d8 plus 20. So uh, 34 points of damage. Okay, he's going to kill it. Actually, as he comes spilling, spilling out, it does kill it. It's, oh, nice. His head flops over and the, the maw gapes open. And he comes billowing out, covered in green purple worm juice and he says uh he slimed me ah. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll cast create water on him from up above <laughs> I, hit, I hit him with press initiation <laughs> to clean him up wash yourself fool he's all clean <laughs> all right so with that it is after 11 so it's a good point to uh stop for the evening as survive the encounter All right. Right. we'll pick up here next <laughs> time good. you can continue with your way to Embla alright appreciate it that was fun good game Jamie thank you good game everybody thanks thank you, guys Jamie. see you next time